So at, for the last uh, little while, we've been talking uh, a little in depth, uh, a study into the Book of Romans. But we're going to take a break from that study of the Book of Romans this morning to engage a little deeper with the gospel passage that we just read from, from Matthew chapter 10. And it is a, a short little passage, but wow, does it hold some powerful challenge. It is a, a challenge of radical hospitality that everything, and, and I mean everything, that we do should be done in Jesus' name. Even the simplest things, the simplest little acts of kindness, like sharing a cup of water, it should be done in Jesus' name. However, what also must be remembered to be true is that when the actions of our lives are associated with Jesus' name, such as uh, when we do things as a church, then we must be conscious of those actions. And so all that we do must be done with integrity and done with kindness and justice and love. Let us pray. Loving Savior, as we engage with Scripture this morning, May you open our ears and our hearts to hear you speak. May we be reminded that whatever we do, we do for you. And so bless us, we pray. Amen. So our passage was really short. It was, it was just a couple verses. But that passage comes at the end of a larger passage around the story of Jesus sending out his disciples two by two uh, to different parts of the region for some mission experience, shall we say. And for those who have been attending the, the Tuesday night chosen uh, discussion group, you'll be familiar with the context of why this mission experience is a little more complex than, than we tend to think about when we read those verses quite quickly. The disciples are being sent out with a gospel message for the Jews first, knowing that the message would then expand to the Gentile population, particularly uh, after Jesus' death and resurrection. Sent out knowing that these different cultures would receive the message of the gospel with different understandings. And so when we, when we get to our passage, when we read the lines about welcoming a prophet or a righteous person in the name of the prophet or righteous person, we need to understand that, that in that Jewish context of having a legal messenger or an emissary who represented another. The disciples were sent out to preach and to heal in Jesus' name. They were given the power of Jesus as they went out two by two for this mission experience as an official representative of Jesus. And that's why it was a big responsibility and their actions had impact and it had consequences. Uh, so that, that's the context um, of which we read our, our passage this morning. I actually, I read an interesting interview this week, uh, an interview with a fellow who, who founded an outreach ministry down in the U.S., and, it's, and it was called the, the Community Renewal Movement and uh, Community Renewal Friendship Houses. Now, the ministry is basically uh, much the same as, as the community center approach like our very own Embrace Center, but on a much, much, much larger scale. And the interesting part of this interview was a statement by the founder that despite all the skepticism and criticism that, that he has gotten over the years, he keeps working because a long time ago he decided that he no longer argues. And what he meant by, by that statement was that he stopped wasting energy on people who were um, not willing or not ready to hear something new or different. 
that he was no longer willing to waste energy on people who were only looking for ways to reject uh, what it was he was going to say. Instead, he devoted his energy to people who, who were open to having an honest conversation. And that, that it, that's kind of what Jesus instructed his, his disciples to be doing in this wider context of our passage. If we backed up just a little in verse 14, Jesus would have told them that if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet and leave that house or that town. Basically telling them, don't waste your energy or your time arguing with those who really have no desire to understand your point of view or the ministry that you're about. And just move on to the next town or to the next house to share that gospel because there was this wonderful gospel that needed to be shared and we needed to get out and get on with it and not be wasting time. Because one of the lessons that Jesus was teaching his disciples and that we know very well is that love will not always be reciprocated with love. Our, our uh, calling is always to love, but the reality is that won't always be reciprocated. Being a follower of Jesus can be difficult, and it was especially true of those very first followers. They suffered persecution, but they were being trained to keep on preaching and teaching to keep on helping and healing because there was too much work to be done to just wallow in places where, where folks were unwilling to listen. Instead, they were to take that, that message of love, that message of salvation, that message of redemption, and they were to take that love and they were to extend it and then extend it farther and then extend it even farther still. Now, we all know that there is just so much work to do in, in what is sometimes called the field of the Lord. Much work to do. Ministry is important, and we have all been given just this amazing responsibility. And I, as your minister, am always going to encourage you to take that responsibility seriously. But today, as we talk about that, that radical hospitality that, that flows forth as our response to God's love, that, that radical hospitality that becomes a symbol of our love for God, I want, I want to remind this community the importance of the grace of accepting and receiving hospitality as well. Sometimes you must be humble enough to also let others help and serve you. You know, the, the psalm, the other scripture passage we read this morning, the Psalm 13, it's not particularly a happy one. The, the literary classification of such a psalm is known as a psalm of disorientation. Because the, the psalmist is crying out, how long, how long will you forget me? How long will you hide your face from me? He is just crying out to God. He says that my heart is grieved. And we hear the pain in those words. The psalmist is, is, is broken, deeply distressed and broken and cries out to the only one who can help in that brokenness. He says, oh God, my God. And the confession of the psalm is not the pain that he's feeling, it's not the circumstance that he is in. The confession of the psalm, it is the statement, but my trust is in your mercy. That's the confession he cries out to God. 
And then that's followed by, let my heart be joyful in your salvation. Friends, the way God answers or shows mercy is very often through the actions of others. Sometimes we're broken. And that brokenness may be obvious to those who are around us, or it may not be. We might look fine and function on the outside, but inside our hearts are grieved. And it doesn't matter whether that is a deep grief of a, of a shattered word, or it is the grief of a series of discouragements. Accept God's gifts of grace that are offered to you and to us through the hands of God's people. It can be humbling, but it is also healthy. And as we think about the idea of offering hospitality or offering that cup of cold water, we need to also be willing to take it. Take that, that compliment. Smile at that card you receive in the mail. Give thanks for that, that container of soup that, that a church friend dropped off to you. Accept that cup of col cold water that has been offered to you in Jesus' name. There, uh, there's a minister that, that always says, to let yourself occasionally be that cherished guest for Christ's sake and Christ's name. Because here's the thing, you know what? I bet that there are times that, that until you accept that, that cold water uh, in Jesus' name, you don't even realize how thirsty your soul really was. Friends, this is the, the first long weekend of summer. The kids are out of school now, so, so it truly feels like summer now. And this is a time to be refreshed. It's a time to extend hospitality, and it is a time to accept hospitality. It is a time to, to find peace for your soul and a time to, to have fun and to be joyful. And as we think about this passage, I want you to, to not just be thinking about it this morning, I want you to be thinking about it as you come back tonight. Because this afternoon we, we will gather again, rain or shine, it doesn't matter, we are going to come back again and we're going to eat picnic food. We're going to have hot dogs and we're going to eat ice cream. We're going to listen to music and we're going to enjoy community art. And if, it, and if it's really nice, we're going to beat some candy out of pinata. but we'll do all of it as a community. A community that loves and cares for one another. And be that community. We will be that community that welcomes others to experience what it is that we have to offer as a community. Because before we can bless others, we have to know ourselves to be blessed. And God has blessed us. And may God continue to bless us as we offer to one another those cups of cold water in Jesus' name. And together we say, thanks be to God. <laughs>